This is a reading in A Course in Miracles, Chapter 10, Section 4. All magic is an attempt at reconciling the irreconcilable. All religion is the recognition that the irreconcilable cannot be reconciled. Sickness and perfection are irreconcilable. If God created you perfect, you are perfect. If you believe you can be sick, you have placed other gods before him. God is not at war with the god of sickness you made, but you are. He is the symbol of deciding against God, and you are afraid of him because he cannot be reconciled with God's will. If you attack him, you will make him real for you. But if you refuse to worship him, in whatever form he may appear to you, and whenever you think you see him, he will disappear into the nothingness out of which he was made. Reality can dawn only on an unclouded mind. It is always there to be accepted, but it is accepted it, it, but its acceptance depends on your willingness to have it. To know reality must involve the willingness to judge unreality for what it is. To overlook nothingness is merely to judge it correctly, and because of your ability to evaluate it truly, to let it go. Knowledge cannot dawn on a mind full of illusions, because truth and illusions are irreconcilable. Truth is whole and cannot be known by part of a mind. The sonship cannot be perceived as partially, uh, partly sick because to perceive it that way is not to perceive it at all. If the sonship is one, it is one in all respects. Oneness cannot be divided. If you perceive other gods, your mind is split and you will not be able to limit the split because it is a sign that you have removed part of your mind from God's will. This means it is out of control. To be out of control is to be out of reason. And then the mind does become unreasonable. By defining the mind wrongly, you perceive it as functioning wrongly. God's laws will keep your mind at peace because peace is his will and his laws are established to uphold it. His are the laws of freedom but yours are the laws of bondage. Since freedom and bondage are irreconcilable their laws cannot be understood together. The laws of God work only for your good and there are no other laws besides his. Everything else is merely lawless and therefore chaotic. Yet God himself has protected everything he created by his laws. Everything that is not under them does not exist. Laws of chaos is a meaningless term. Creation is perfectly lawful and the chaotic is without meaning because it is without God. You have given your peace to the gods you made, but they are not there to take it from you, and you cannot give it to them. You are not free to give up freedom, but only to deny it. You cannot do what God did not intend because what he did not intend does not happen. Your gods do not bring chaos. You are endowing them with chaos and accepting it of them. All this has never been. Nothing but the laws of God has ever been, and nothing but his will will ever be. You were recreated through his laws and by his will and the manner of your creation established you a creator. What you have made is so unworthy of you that you could hardly want it. 
if you were willing to see it as it is. You will see nothing at all, and your vision will automatically look beyond it to what it is in you and all around you. Reality cannot break through the obstructions of your interpose, obstructions you interpose, but it will envelop you completely when you let them go. When you have experienced the protection of God, the making of idols becomes inconceivable. There are no strange images um, to the mind of God, and what is not in his mind cannot be in yours, because you are of one mind, and that mind belongs to him. It is yours because it belongs to him, for to him ownership is sharing. And if it is so for him, it is so for you. His definitions are his laws, for by them he established the universe as what it is. No false gods you attempt to interpose between yourself and your reality affect truth at all. Peace is yours because God created you, and he created nothing else. The miracle is the act of a son of God who has laid aside all false gods and calls on his brothers to do likewise. It is an act of faith because it is the recognition that his brother can do it. It is a call to the Holy Spirit in his mind, a call that is strengthened by joining because the miracle worker has heard God's voice. He strengthens it in a sick brother by weakening his belief in sickness, which he does not share. The power of one mind can shine into another because all the lamps of God were lit by the same spark. It is everywhere and it is eternal. And many only speak, only the spark remains. For the great rays are obscured. Yet God has kept that spark alive so that the rays can never be completely forgotten. If you but see the little spark, you will learn of the greater light, for the rays are there unseen. Perceiving the spark will heal, but knowing the light will create. Yet, in the returning, the little light must be acknowledged first, for the separation was a decent form, uh, a decent, a, a descent, excuse me, a descent from magnitude to littleness. But the spark is still as pure as the great light, because it is the, it is the remaining call of creation. Put all your faith in it, and God himself will answer you. That is the end of the reading of chapter 10, section 4 in A Course in Miracles.